Hi everyone, I want to talk about heart failure diagnosis with emphasis on brain natriuretic peptides. Diagnosis of heart failure is clinically made through history taking and physical examination. You can kindly check my first video on heart failure. You are going to find details about those two there. But for accuracy purpose, we do the following, and that will be laboratory, radiological, and the rest. But right now, let's talk about brain natriuretic peptides in making diagnosis of heart failure. Brain natriuretic peptide is initially in the brain, but is from the heart chambers, particularly the ventricles. It's increased in heart failure and left ventricular dysfunction. Atrial natriuretic peptide is from the two atria. Sometimes from ventricular apertrophy, it's also increased in heart failure and left ventricular dysfunction. The bone function as diuretics, and the natriuretic peptide will also send out sodium in urine thereby decreasing the blood pressure. Brain natriuretic peptides protect the heart against progressive failure. Brain natriuretic peptides are released from the ventricles like I've said just a while ago. The values will increase with age and values are higher in men compared to men. That's what we call N-terminal pro-hormone brain natriuretic peptide. Both brain natriuretic peptide and NTPRO BNP are released in response to changes in heart chambers, and mostly during heart failure or fibrillation. BNP and NTPRO BNP are found in heart failure, and BNP in heart failure is expected to be greater than 400 picogram per milliliter. NT-pro-BNP in heart failure, the value will be higher than will be related to the age. For example, 450 pg per ml if the individual is less than 50 years old. Anything higher than that is diagnostic. 900 pg per ml if the individual is between 60 and 70 years old and 1800 pg per ml if the individual is greater than 75 years old but let me repeat these are values for nt pro bnp i'm not saying this is a value for bnp okay if bnp is between 100 to 400 pg per ml, you will need more tests to be able to say specifically that this is heart failure. But if BNP is less than 100 pg per ml, you can categorically say that this is not heart failure. If NT pro BNP is below 300 pg per ml, then you can categorically and definitively say this is not heart failure. Higher values of BNP can give a likelihood to heart failure, but that doesn't rule out other associated conditions that can cause dyspnea. And in that case, you might still have to take your chest X-ray, proper history, proper physical examination, more test to be able to rule out other conditions like pneumonia and pulmonary embolism. While on treatment, the value of BNP or anti-pro-BNP should be dropping. But don't be fooled, that may not happen. Higher values can occur when there's a suited renal failure. So you are treating the patient and you are doing well. 
The medications are working well. As a matter of fact, some of the medications will even cause confusion, giving you higher value. I'll go to that in a bit. So everything is going well from your own thinking, and your suspicion is that this person is getting better, other physical features are improving, but then the value of BNP is not dropping, and that of NT pro BNP is not dropping. Check again and again, and one of those things I'm going to check is what is happening to the renal system. So in renal failure, you are going to have the value still remaining high, though you are winning as far as heart failure is concerned. This near due to corpomonary, okay? And you know, the medical students, the nurses, they understand what corpomonary is all about. That is lung disease causing right heart failure. The value will rise, but the problem is not with left heart failure. So the left heart is still working well. Okay, they are lower in obesity and higher when there are sepsis. So when the value is expected to be low, but you're finding it to be high, check the medication. We're gonna go into that in a bit. Check sepsis, rule out renal failure, okay? And lung diseases as well. Okay, now interest to and BNP value. Here's the problem. Um, when you place a patient on Entresto, that is the combined medication that involves Akubutri and Vasatan, okay? Use NT pro NB values to judge whether you are winning or not. Particularly because there is Akubutri here. Sakubutri is a nephrolysine inhibitor. It will not affect the value of NT pro BNP, but sacubutri will cause inhibition of BNP destruction. In other words, BNP will not be destroyed when the patient is on sacubutri from Entresto. Hence, the value of BNP will be high. Though you are winning, you are treating the patient, other physical factors are doing well, you are improving, the patient is improving, but checking the BMP to remain high, and you are using Entresto, okay, Sakubutri. So, note the above two parameters. Note this point that the patient is taking Entresto when you are judging the level of success while the patient is on Entresto. Sakubutri will let BMP value to remain high. Vasatan, that is agiotensin receptor blocker, the other component of Entresto doesn't have any role as per this. BMP values are higher in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction compared to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. The one with reduced ejection fraction is systolic dysfunction. The one with preserved ejection fraction is diastolic dysfunction. We'll go into that later on. If you desire to determine the efficacy of heart failure treatment, then serial serum measurement will be more appropriate than a single parameter. So, you want to follow up with the patient I want to use the value of BMP, make it a serial one, not uh, just one factor, one day, and say, oh, we are not doing well. No. Heart failure with symptoms is not a guarantee that BMP or NT pro BMP will be high. Some may have no symptoms and still have higher values, particularly if they are young, stable, no ischemia, and no cardiomyopathy. In other words, the age of the patient will determine. Um, sometimes there's heart failure. 
particularly in young people, stable people, that is dynamically stable, they are walking around, no problem. They've never experienced ischemia or infarction before, and there is no cardiomyopathy. If all these things are absent, your BNP, anti pro BNP, may be within normal range. And they are still in heart failure. So we interpret the values of BNP, anti pro BNP, with caution. No, it, again, let me repeat this because this is very, very important. You are checking your BNP, and before you conclude that, oh, okay, I'm going to judge this individual, you know, don't judge the book by the cover, so, so, so to speak. So, BNP, anti pro BNP, is not high. That is not a guarantee that this person is not in heart failure. The next thing to do is, what is the age? Young? Is this person stable? Yes. Any history of ischemia before? No. Any history of myocardial infarction? No. Any cardiomyopathy? No. Then don't give me that value of BNP to make determination here. Okay? Uses of brain natural peptides. Needless to say, heart failure. Okay? Cardiomyopathy. Atrial fibrillation, corpus pulmonary, leading to right heart failure, androcycline, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, pulmonary hypertension, left ventricular dysfunction, renal failure, where you administer an entresto, but consider the age, the gender, the body mass index, presence of renal failure, sepsis, while interpreting the values. The next presentation will be on diagnosis two, where I'll be talking about all other laboratory parameters to be considered in heart failure, all radiological interventions that could be involved. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that we can all follow this series together and be able to help many people with heart failure. Thank you.